At this point, we're four years into the Apple Silicon Mac, which also happens to be the best era of Mac computers I can think of. Everything's pretty great right now. And now we have the M4 Max. I've got it here in the MacBook Pro 16 inch with the nano texture display. And I think now that we've had a few updates, we're just hitting that point where people with M1s are starting to wonder, is it time to upgrade? So far, you've been able to cruise. M1 Max was amazing. You can still do everything with it. But now, does the M4 Max outperform it enough that you can justify the upgrade? I'm gonna do a bunch of real world tests, applications that I actually use all the time, the things that slow me down the most. Let's see what the M4 Max can handle. So first I just want to take a spin through Final Cut Pro since this is what I usually edit on. This is my latest YouTube project. It's moderately complicated. I don't think it's pushing it too hard. It's all shot in 4K with color corrections on top. Everything plays back fine with scopes displayed, which I'd expect we've kind of had that for a little while now. So let's try pushing it a little bit harder. I'm gonna try tracking this one shot. And by the way, during the Mac mini announcement, did you catch the little magnetic mask reference that was hidden in there? Hopefully this is a hint to having it built into future versions of Final Cut Pro. Right now, Motion VFX does the absolute best job of this with Roto AI. So I just scribble over on you here to create a tracker, and then I can just track forwards and backwards. Now this is, this is fantastic. This is almost real time on a 60 frames per second clip. It's, it's just cruising through this footage. Like what I worry about is would this slow me down? Would this ever prevent me from tracking a shot? And no, that was, that was extremely fast. So then, you know, what you would do with this, you could copy and paste the layers, put them on top of each other. Maybe you would add a title. Let's just call this, uh, well, Peru shot on iPhone and make it big, bigger. And then we can put the title in between, make the rotoscope show just that top layer. And now Anya is floating here. Actually, this could be a little bit better because we should actually track the rocks. I don't really like to do demos that don't actually work out. So let's actually finish this shot real quick. Track again, forward. That is so snappy. Oh, I see a little mistake. So I can quickly just stop, color in some more rocks and track it again. And what I love about tracking lately is all of a sudden, like I can just do rotoscoping in every project. Like I'm applying this to almost every video I edit lately and not having it slow down is just totally essential. This is also in DaVinci as well. A lot of apps are starting to do this. So one more time, let's look at our result. And that is definitely something I'm pretty happy with. I don't want to test Final Cut Pro too much because we do know a new version is coming. So let's leave this for now. Now I'm going to load up the same project on all three computers here. This is the M1 Max MacBook Pro. And back here is a M2 Ultra. And this the M2 Ultra is, it's still the best you can buy. It has twice as many GPU cores as the M4 Max. And it's a desktop. I mean, this is a laptop. These are going to be running on battery power pretty much the whole time unless they start dying at any point. Resolve really is the perfect place to slow down a big computer. So uh, Cam Mackey, yeah, this is his footage. He's been supplying them for my last few uh, tests where I'm stress testing computers. And there's a basic grade going on here, including some pretty heavy noise reduction. And at the end, some film grain and vignetting being added. And then I'm also gonna add one of my LUTs in the middle here. So this is actually a test that most computers have been failing so far. The M1 Max can't do this, but let's, Check out what playback is like with noise reduction, sharpening, gluts, color grading, and also film effects. We have full speed playback. 24 frames per second, not dropping any frames, completely smooth. And this is 6K Blackmagic raw footage. Let's see the next clip here, also smooth. The noise reduction is usually what completely kills it. Like it's just a no go and you just can't work in real time. And just to clarify too, I have everything turned up here. We've got full playback resolution, the render cache is off. We can delete it again just to be sure. This is huge so you can just work in real time in the most professional color grading environments with all the effects you want to use. Actually, let me stack this up a little bit further. On our final film look creator, let's like add everything because often like halation really slows things down and so does bloom. I've already got the grain turned on, some flicker. Uh, how about some gate weave? Let's really make this look old. And it still plays back smooth, but now we're down to 21 frames per second. So we are starting to bump up, bump up against the limits of the M4 Max. Looks like adding all those effects is the absolute max you can do. And even then you're, you're dropping a few frames for playback. And now let's take a look on the M1 Max, which remember how mind blowing this was when it came out. Okay, what can it handle? With screen recording too, 
All right, we're getting 14 frames per second with all that noise removal, exact same setup. So it's you can sort of work in this environment, but just barely. Uh, I find you need to turn it down to half resolution, and then you do get full speed playback, which is totally workable. You can work at half resolution a lot of the time, but you can now play it back at full resolution, which you know if you were gonna go to full screen mode, you might want to be able to see it on a bigger monitor uh, with that ability. And also keep in mind, if you're running external monitors, that does eat up GPU cycles and stresses the machine more. So speaking of, let's check out what it does on the M2 Ultra and full speed playback too, 24 frames per second, same as the M4 Max. But Cam isn't easy to please. He also included some other noise reduction examples that use new settings. Uh, there's an ultra noise reduction from Resolve that cranks it up even higher. Let's see what this can do. Play. This is slowing it down. So the ultra noise reduction, we're only getting five frames per second at full resolution. So let's try turning that down. We're gonna play it back at half resolution. Go back to the beginning. Now we're getting 20 frames per second. So not quite real time, but you know, like it, it could sort of pass. Here's another one, 20 frames per second. One more. So, okay, so not bad. Like we are finding the limits here. Now let's see what happens on the M1 Max. We're at full resolution playback and zero for one, two, one or <laughs> one frame per second, two. Okay, we're getting almost, I mean, you, you could not work with this ultra noise reduction on the M1 Max. So there's just a new thing you could do. If you're thinking about the upgrade, all of a sudden it moves from unable to edit with your noise reduction turned on to now you can. Let's also take a look at the ultra. That's interesting. Six frames per second. Can I double check this? So I'm getting very similar results. The M2 Ultra is going back and forth between six and seven frames per second, or it's four to five frames per second on the M4 Max. The Ultra should be more powerful. Keep that in mind. It has twice as many GPUs. It's two Max chips fused together. And this is still like the current best desktop computer you can buy from Apple right now. They didn't do the M3 Ultra generation. So this is as good as it gets, and you're almost at the exact same level running on a battery with the M4 Max MacBook Pro. Ever since Apple put the XDR display in the M1 Max, it's just been one of the best displays you can get, not just for a laptop, but like it's, it's just one of the best displays. It's gotten even better on the M4, so now it has the nano texture option. I've shown this before, but I think this is as impressive as it possibly gets. The best use case really, I think, is a laptop because you have a less controlled environment, you're outside, you have lights around you and they change all the time. I 100% think this is worth it for anybody who cares about their images. I mean, some people worry about there being less contrast compared to the glossy screen and it, it doesn't bother me. I, I know it does bother some people, so take a look at it in person, but this, this is worth it. And on the M4, they've also unlocked a brighter maximum brightness. So let's try cranking both of them up to 100%. So the M1 was maxed out at 500 nits and the M4 goes all the way up to 1000 nits. You definitely can see there is a difference. This is helpful for being outside. Obviously the numbers are logarithmic, so 1000 isn't double the brightness of 500. But if you need to see what you're working on outside, the M4 does it better than ever. If you decide to go with the nano texture, it does come with the Apple polishing cloth, which I think a lot of people think that you need to use this to clean it, like it's the only way to get fingerprints off. Basically, this is just a very good polishing cloth. So Apple's sort of like, oh, it's, it's the one we can guarantee. It's not gonna pick up debris and potentially rub that into your screen. Um, so you absolutely can clean this with any cloth that you want. Apple's just like, oh, there'll be less risk if you use ours because ours is fancy. So we'll see how this holds up over time. So far, it seems to take fingerprints on in the same amount roughly since that's what happens with laptops. The grease from the keyboard gets on the screen. Looks like that'll still happen. And just before we get to more tests, some of the other new things are Thunderbolt 5, which I wasn't actually following the development of it, but all three of the USB-C ports support Thunderbolt 5. And what an amazing spec. It's up to three times faster than Thunderbolt 4 was, it means you can run three 6K displays out of here if you need to do that. I mean, it's basically over-spec'd for where we are right now, which is amazing. So 
definitely gonna be more future-proof in terms of in and out ports than anything else. And battery life is also supposed to be quite a bit improved. I wasn't able to test that thoroughly, but anecdotally, sitting next to the M1 Max, it was lasting longer. And by the way, if you like the way this video looks or any other videos I make, I do have a brand new set of LUTs. So you can get the exact same look straight out of camera. They're designed specifically for the iPhone, especially iPhone 15 and 16, but it does work on previous ones as well. Check it out in the link below. Now let's get into some real world benchmarking. I didn't run Cinebench and all those other things because everyone else already did and the results are insane. Uh, fastest single core scores out there like faster than any other computers, it's amazing. But how does that translate to the real world? I have the same photos loaded up in Lightroom catalogs on all of these computers. It's a mix of large resolution, like a Q360 megapixel photos, and also some Fuji and some Canon. Like These are a variety of formats and files, and I'm gonna run the same intensive processes on all of them, starting with creating smart masks in Lightroom. So I'm gonna do a subject detection, which works great. I mean, I've been using these all the time, they're amazing. And then I'm also gonna detect the sky and I'm gonna make like a little adjustment to it, nothing crazy. And I'm just gonna run that on these 100 photos and see how long it takes. So the results are interesting. The M1 Max took three minutes, 17 seconds. The M2 Ultra took three minutes and five seconds, but the M4 Max only took two minutes, 12 seconds. Substantially, like way faster. Then even the M2 Ultra, I, I didn't really expect it to beat the M2 Ultra at many things, but right away it is faster at creating smart AI masks in Lightroom. A lot of these tests I'm gonna do are really AI forward, so things like the neural engine will be well used. And I should note, good time, I'm not gonna talk about Apple intelligence at all here, even though it is available on these computers because it's not stress testing it and it's still early. I just, I don't find it that interesting yet. I wanna give it a little longer to develop. The most interesting AI features to me are professional applications that push the computer harder. So that's what we're gonna see. Next up, let's do some AI denoising. So this is somewhat new in Lightroom. I mean, the last couple of years, but I know there's a lot of people that are using it constantly, like on every single photo. And I actually found myself doing that for recent client work because it really just brings all the noise away and holds on to all the detail. I'm gonna run it at about 50%, and I'm only gonna do it to 15 images on all the computers, run it at the same time. These are all shot in the Q3. By the sound of the fans, that definitely ran all of these computers a lot harder. And these results, well, these are interesting in a different way. Okay, so the M1 Max took six minutes and nine seconds. Big improvement on the M4 Max, it took four minutes and two seconds. But then the M2 Ultra took two minutes and 42 seconds. I mean, interesting how different these results are from the mask selection, but the Ultra still has a pretty significant lead there. But again, if you're moving from an M1 to the M4, that's a big jump. You're saving, what, 30% faster? It's pretty good. So now I've selected a different set of 15 photos, and I'm gonna run Reblum Retouch, <laughs> which is a plugin I've been using a lot lately. And basically it just does skin retouching in a really intelligent way. Like I, I'm very impressed with how it works. I've been running it pretty often. I'll turn it up to 100% in fashion mode, which does the, the most processing and leave the preset at high quality. That was a little bit of a tighter race. The M1 Max came in at two minutes, 37 seconds. The M4 Max, two minutes, 11 seconds, and the M2 Ultra, one minute, 34 seconds. Again, the Ultra has the lead in that AI skin retouching. There's a few different programs doing this, but it's a good test as well, because it's all running locally. Like uh, generative fill in Photoshop is in the cloud. This is all happening on your machine, so it's a better way to test what's actually happening. And um, let's go back into the world of video, try an export from Cam's footage. It's one minute of video, again, tons of noise reduction, lots going on here. I'm gonna use the H.265 default render settings. Let's see how it does. All right, that one wasn't looking good for the M1 Max, which I considered this to run Resolve really well, but it took five minutes and nine seconds to export that project. The M4 Max took one minute and 59 seconds, and the M2 Ultra took one minute, 24 seconds. So the award goes to the Ultra in this one, um, but that's a pretty significant jump from, if you're on an M1 
Pro Max, what's called an M1. If you're on an M1 Mac, and you get an M4 Mac. I mean, it's more than twice as fast. That's That could be worth an upgrade. So let's push this AI thing really hard. We'll use Topaz Video AI, use that same timeline we just exported. And I'm just gonna do the first uh, nine seconds here, just that very first clip. And use the preset four times slow motion. If you haven't already seen AI slow motion, it's, I mean, it's good now. Like it used to not look great, but even built into Final Cut, it's such a powerful feature and I'm using it all the time. So I want this to be faster. It would really help out my modern workflows. And the results, this is not looking good for the M1 Max. A little, a little shocking actually. So the M1 Max comes in at 22 minutes, 57 seconds. I mean, at least it can do it. If this was an Intel machine, I don't even, I don't know what would happen. Our desktop took six minutes and 36 seconds. Pretty good. Now, the M4 Max was five minutes and 14 seconds. So I don't know the exact recipe of what optimization is causing what, but the M4 Max is coming in faster than the M2 Ultra, which again, this is running on battery the whole time. I set it to high performance mode, so it's turning on the fans as often as it can and running hard and doing better than the plugged in M2 Ultra. I mean, that's amazing and obviously totally crushing the M1 Max. So those are the results for now. There's a lot more I could test and let me know in the comments below what you wish I had tested. Maybe I'll get around to it. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.